This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is on the conservation of thermodynamic energy. The equations for atmospheric motion are all conservation equations and they all come from classical physics. And in no place are they more anchored in classical physics than in the thermodynamic energy equation. I assume that the students that are taking this class have either had a course in thermodynamics or a course in physical meteorology that introduces the thermodynamics that are relevant to the field of weather and climate. Thermodynamics connects heat and work, and heat and work are both forms of energy. Heat is related to temperature and can be thought of as the energy transfer associated with temperature change. And in the classical sense, temperature is in fact related to the motion of the molecules and the atoms that make up a substance. Therefore, in a certain sense, heat is the internal kinetic energy associated with a substance. Work, on the other hand, is mechanical and is related to an object moving some distance against some force. It's often called force through a distance. What we do with thermodynamics is connect heat and work together. And this is especially true in the first law of thermodynamics. So the conservation of energy, the thermodynamic equation that we will consider in dynamic meteorology, states that the change in internal energy is equal to the difference between the heat added to the system and the work done by the system. Again, the change in internal energy is the difference between the heat added to the system and the work done by the system. And since heat and work are both energy, you can see the natural relationship to internal energy. Total thermodynamic energy is the internal energy plus the energy due to the parcel of air or to some other piece of matter that is moving. Mathematical form of the thermodynamic energy, I will write like this, where we are writing it in terms of a difference, dH, is equal to another difference with ds times alpha dp. Now we'll go through and define these. So the mathematical representation follows from the first law and says that the increase in internal energy of a closed system is equal to the difference of the heat supplied and the work done. And since we are talking about the increase or the decrease or the change in internal energy is why we write this in terms of these differentials where here the D is as in calculus dH. And what H is here is enthalpy. And enthalpy is essentially a measure or, or a type of, of heat. And it's equal to the temperature times dS. And in this case, S is the entropy. And entropy is often said to be a measure of disorder. But there is a certain amount of internal energy within a substance that it's not really available for work. And hence, the entropy appears as as that sort of, that base, that foundation. The change in entropy can be available for work. So again, we're back to this idea of, of change. And then alpha is a specific volume, P is pressure, and alpha dP is some sort of measure of volume times pressure, which if you can think of the volume as a measure of distance moved, you're talking about the relationship of mechanical work there. You can see here for air, since we're going to ultimately be using the ideal gas law, that you're connecting temperature, specific volume, pressure, and all of these things together are going to be related to the expansion and the compression of air. In a very simple way, if you go back to a physics book, this again is essentially heat, internal energy, and work. 
And with that, that is an introduction to the conservation of thermodynamic energy. We will be writing out the time rate of change in the fluid dynamical formulation of this equation. And I refer students back to their texts on thermodynamics and physical meteorology if they want or need to know more about the subject.